Welcome to the Heal Podcast. I'm Kelly Noonan Gores, and every week I speak to the leading doctors, healers, spiritual teachers, and scientists to find out what is truly possible when it comes to healing. I also interview real people with extraordinary healing stories. My philosophy is what's possible for one is possible for all. Well, on today's episode of the Heal Podcast, I'm sitting here with David Reed, um, who is the founder of Mana Vitality. And a little bit different of how I came to invite you on the podcast because I think, you know, Instagram is now, I feel like, just a marketplace of advertising. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, as it should be. Um, but I think it was Ben Greenfield. I was just scrolling through one day and he was talking about your supplement, Mana Vitality. Okay. And it just struck me, and I'm not one to click on things or buy things on Instagram, so I minimize the ads that come to me. And But I, I was just hooked a little bit by the name, perhaps. Like I had been talking about you know, doing something with the name Mana, and it, it, it's, it had been coming up like just in some healing work that I had been doing in the last six months. And so I was like, okay, Mana, that's a, that's a little signpost. Mm. So I went to the website and I was reading kind of your journey, how you came to create this product with your partner um, and your spiritual journey. And, and it just resonated. And then, you know, just the basis of the product and, and really reconnecting to earth and um, just in my awareness, you know, the reason that we're, there's so much disease is because we have disconnected so much from nature. Mm. So I just so, so <laughs> deeply resonated with your philosophy. Um, so I thought, you know, I know not much about you, but following the resonance, I said, I want to hear this guy's story. Um, and leaving, you know, I think you were in med tech or science or, mm. you know, the medical industry. And then you went on this kind of seeking pilgrimage of spirituality and ended here today. So I'd love to just kind of hear about your story and then we can dive into, you know, uh, the details and and talk more about it because I'm so fascinated mm -hmm. by your kind of spiritual awakening. Yeah, thank you. I guess as a little boy, I always had those questions, you know, where do we come from? What are we doing here? Mm -hmm. and it's like, you know, we're here, <laughs> but no one can really give you those answers, which to me was always a bit strange. So, uh, yeah, I went through normal childhood, normal conditioning, uh, but those answers remained. And I guess I got to an age of 33 where I just couldn't handle not exploring those in a deeper way. So I stopped everything I was doing and was inspired to just go out into nature. And, uh, yeah, nature became my greatest teacher for the next several years of just communing with the elements and um, spending a lot of time on country. Wow. Mm. Oh, so, yeah, tell us a little bit about what, you know, I know you spent 88 d days on the Sleeping by the Dead Sea, mm. which I thought was so funny hearing you talk about it. It should not be called the Dead Sea because it is so alive with minerals and everything we need, right? Totally. Um, so just take us on that journey of 33. Like you walked away from, I'm assuming, a career you had you know committed some time to but then you followed your heart which mm. I don't know I feel like it's a time in history where a lot of people are questioning what they're doing and their mm. happiness or they're they're feeling a general kind of discontent mm. um, and so I love to share stories of people that follow their heart mm. and kind of give up the comfort and the, the <laughs> paycheck to go explore and to seek um, answers that they're looking for so just Give us a little, how'd that journey start and some of the highlights? Yeah, it was, I mean, I had a great job. It was a great income. There was parts of me that did love it. I just knew there was more. Mm -hmm. And I had a couple of good mentors that said, you know, why don't you just stop, go and find what you love, go and find answers to your questions. You know, it's a perfect age to do it. You got some money behind you. Uh, but it still took like a lot of courage to actually pull the pin because that paycheck comes in every month and it's so comfortable to have that coming in and the months come around pretty quickly, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so I was reading several different books that were quite inspiring about how to, man how to manifest. And Tell there was me. actually- Titles, a titles, I need titles. Yeah, yeah, well one was uh, Think and Grow Rich, okay. which is amazing. Another yeah. one was The Secret. Another one was The Passion Test. 
Okay. Uh, and I was quite inspired by an Austrian scientist from last century called Victor Schulberger. Okay. He's known as the Water Wizard. So he's got four books. They actually weren't written by him, but they were written by somebody that spent some time with him. Um, and one of them is called the Water Wizard. And he was a really smart man that was like ducks in his high school. And his dad was like a professor. And his family was really excited what he was going to do with, you know, what he was going to do in college. Mm-hmm. And he actually just went out into nature for two years into the Austrian Alps and observed nature. And that was super inspiring for me. So, uh, yeah, I I stopped everything, went out to the centre of Australia, spent three months out there initially. And then I guess in reflection, like at the time, I didn't really know what I was doing. Mm -hmm. Uh, But at the time... I was just kind of following a guidance and in reflection it was this divine unfoldment. Uh, But in amongst that I also did a Vipassana which kind of accelerated my journey of meditation and that understanding of who we are, developed more awareness in, in how to observe and how to detach from, you know, the emotions and, um, I guess the person. Mm And then after that, I instinctively uh, started sun gazing. And that was probably the most powerful thing I've ever done. So where I live in the Sunshine Coast of Australia, we get about 300 sunny days a year. So it's very supportive for sun gazing, whether it's in the morning or the afternoon, that first hour or last hour of the day. And yeah, that really transformed my way of thinking and my perception and made me realise that we're actually not separate from anything, actually. So it removes layers of fear. Mm. uh, And as I said, it kind of really rewired my perception of of who we are, um, which developed uh, just this really deep gratitude, right? Like once we start actually figuring out the truth of who we are and realizing it's the greatest miracle we can ever uncover, then that to me was, just a nice foundation to keep moving forward. Mm. And wow! So the sun gazing—that's <laughs> like something we, we haven't really covered in you know this healed journey, which is so cool that you're bringing it up today. And so I imagine, <clears throat> you know, the first hour and the last hour are the safe times to gaze at the sun. Mm-hmm. And you, does it just get you in such a meditative state that you just? Because it is kind of hypnotic looking mm. at sun's rays and the heat waves and all of that. Yes. Um, so do you just? get sort of like is it like hallucinogenic is it just do you just get downloads because you're hypnotized in a way what, what would you say the sun gazing leads to? yeah the process i used was adding 10 seconds a day per day so i started at 10 seconds second day is 20 seconds third day is 30 seconds okay. and if you do that for nine months weather dependent obviously so it might actually take you 12 months of adding you get up to 45 minutes so you don't necessarily notice too much in that first kind of five, 10 minutes, and then things start happening. <laughs> oh gosh, okay. <laughs> yeah, and, it, and it's beautiful because you're not only getting those early morning uh, ultraviolet rays and the red light, but you're also developing a relationship with the sun. And the sun, I feel like most of us take it for granted, but it's actually the source of all life. Mm. It's the source of all light and life within the solar system. Plus the earth is following the sun around the universe in this perfect phi um, spiral. And it's protecting us, right? Like it's putting out this big golden shower that's preventing a lot of things from crashing into us. So, yeah, it's... I mean, light is actually what we are, even though there's a lot of other like interference layers and and patterns uh, running and we're having this beautiful human experience, which is duality. So we get to experience it all. But light is non-dual. So it's actually where we come from and where we're returning to. Sounds a lot like source and spirit. (laughs) Totally, totally. And it's the greatest source of unconditional love we can ever experience, right? Like it just shines light 
24 7 mm-hmm. it doesn't care whether you're a good person a bad person it just shines lights and from a healing perspective once we're getting that light into the eyes it reprograms our entire physiology so there's a lot of people that have sun gazed for nine or 12 months that um, are, are basically living off light they don't need food anymore so well our body being the most advanced technology in the universe is actually clever enough that when our when the quotient of light inside of our body gets to a certain stage it totally transforms into a brand new species and can be self-sustainable wow yeah okay well i guess i better start sun gazing (laughs) that's incredible i know you know circadian rhythms and getting that sunlight first thing in the morning is very helpful for melatonin production and all that Mm. but you just took it you know Mm. exponentially higher and deeper so Mm. definitely going to try it but nine months it's such a commitment I mean to do it the 10 seconds every day like that's so precise but it's worth it yeah and it's just an approximation okay Um, but yeah the point is that you're building up slowly giving your eyes time to adjust Uh, and your eyes and your body tell you you know if you've got to back it off or if you can go further But once you get up to kind of 20, 30 minutes, that's when, you know, you start communing with the sun. And probably the most profound experience I had doing that was it removed those layers of separation. Mm. And I realized that we are the sun and the sun is us. And there's no distance between us and the sun or anything. Yeah. It's all, everything that's out there is also with inside of us. Mm. So when you reach and reach those deeper layers of perception, I guess it develops a deeper peace and, and harmony, um, which is a nice way to exist. Yeah, and yeah. then yeah, everything's connected. Mm-hmm. There's no, there's no, this space is an illusion, right? It's yeah. Well, separation, separation is what yeah. brings in a lot of the fear mm-hmm. um, and a lot of the disharmony and the disease. So if we can remove those layers of separation and discover the truth that's a very deep way to heal and it sounds like you it sounds like that's like a light program upgrade like of the the operating system right <laughs> like totally which we all probably need based on what's going on in the world um and just that kind of toxic soup that we're li- living in <clears throat> um what is your experience after that like as sun gazing as a practice and this immense energy kind of i don't i, I guess it's up up great or new it's like light nutrients for your body um have you experienced like what kind of you must be like vital <laughs> pillar of health no disease do you have any health issues that have come up in the last since you've been sun gazing Are no you- that was a decade ago so that was in uh 2012 oh wow that i did that for a year okay but you don't do it every morning i do it i still do it when i can okay but it. not every morning got it uh, especially when i'm traveling there's a lot of mornings um where you're either not facing east, mm-hmm. like here in Santa Monica, okay. <laughs> or it's overcast. Yeah. Uh, but I still try and get out into the sun most days. Um, not in the middle of the day, especially in Australia, because that can be uh, detrimental. Uh, but those early hours is really powerful. And uh, yeah, it's, um, it's, it's, it's a beautiful process because, uh, yeah, it also activates just a lot of things inside of us. Um, that stay with us for the rest of our life. <laughs> Amazing. Okay. And so tell me about, the mana supplement is made of two two ingredients? Yes. Like two main ingredients. Yes. How did you discover those? I think one is from the <laughs> highest elevation, one is from the lowest, correct? Tell us a little bit about that story because I was hooked. I was like, that just feels very like balanced and polar and um, cool where you found the sources of your supplement and and how you intuitively knew that Mm. that's what kind of we need for health and vitality. Yeah, well, I guess um, from my first trip to Egypt, I was introduced to a substance called Ormus. Um, And there's three different different ways to make that with a document that I was given um, from a gentleman who was the guardian of the Sphinx. And uh, one of those was from seawater. The other was from dead seawater. 
which the two are totally different solutions, totally different source solutions, totally different makeups when you test them in a laboratory. And then the third um, substance was pure gold. Wow. Yeah, so I made it those three ways and um, started sharing it with people. I went away from the gold because it was just so expensive. I think at the time it was like $1,500 for an ounce and, mm. you know, you end up with a little bit of white powder. So I was like, that doesn't really work with... Um, the way I operate because it felt way too exclusive. Mm -hmm. So I kind of shelved that and just started making it from uh, seawater and and dead seawater. Um, and yeah, so I did that for a little while and then kind of gave it away because I was sharing it with people and they're having all kind of funky experiences. And I just uh, um, didn't feel like I knew enough about it to take on that responsibility. Okay. Back then, 10 years ago. What's a, one example of a funky experience? <laughs> that was like, whoa, I don't know. Yeah, people, I guess, coming back with experiences of, um, you know, accessing their subconscious mind. Mm. Subconscious mind can have anything from, um, you know, genetic information coming up or past life or even early childhood, Got it. which can be um, very traumatic for people. Right. Um, yeah, so when they were kind of calling me or sending me messages, I thought, oh, oh I, I need to know more about this. Got it. So yeah, that next year I actually came here to the US and, and bought an old uh, F-250 and traveled around for three months um, visiting all kind of underground uh, plasma labs and <laughs> alchemists and scientists to learn more about it and came across a beautiful gentleman called Barry Carter who was kind of known as the librarian of Ormus on the planet for the last 25 years. Oh. So I went and stayed at his house for about 10 days he ended up giving me his life's work on a on a hard drive, which at the time was uh, 1.4 terabytes of information. And um, yeah, traveled around the US meeting all of these people. And that gave me a lot more confidence in what I was doing. And uh, I kind of gave it away again, just, you know, because there's so many things to, mm -hmm. to do. And I was also... Um, becoming an inventor in a lot of other resonant technology and free energy technology. Uh, but then I would just keep going on these trips. You know, people would invite me on trips or I'd feel I needed to go somewhere. And often that'd be for a week or two, but I'd stay there for like three to six months wow. because I had the time and I would just sit on country. And some of those experiences were really powerful to me, in particular the one at the Dead Sea that you brought up before. Uh, yeah, where again I was just able to sun gaze and fast and really dive deeply into that whole mineral world and um, the different elemental expressions and that had a really big impact on me and what I'm doing now. So that's where I learned a lot about uh, hypertonic ocean plasma which, is, which really just means like really um, micronutrient rich water. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So really high in all of those uh, salts that are so important for the body and all of those other macro nutrients. Mm -hmm. And then had the same experience in the Himalayas with the shilajit. Uh, and shilajit is the, the most amazing superfood that I've still been able to find on the planet now. Like there's nothing else that I know of that has that same level of concentration of macronutrients. Uh, micronutrients, sorry, micronutrients, so all the, the little building blocks that, mm. that everything else is made from, basically. So um, the, the micronutrients that are in Shilajit is all of the vitamins that we need, all of the minerals that we need, and all of the amino acids that we need, and more. And then it's also something called a biogenetic stimulant. So because those plants that it's made from are exposed to extreme environmental conditions, they develop these pr protective compound, compounds. And we're, when we're able to um, extract those protective compounds and then ingest them, it improves a whole bunch of things inside our body. Like it, it, it improves, improves energy, uh, metabolism, um, protection, obviously, and a lot of resilience, which is really important at the moment, mm -hmm. um, and just overall general health. So, yeah, shilajit's amazing for that. And then it's got another ingredient in it called fulvic acid, mm -hmm. which is known as a supercell conductor. And where that's amazing is when that comes into contact with all these micronutrients, it's able to break them down into a state where they're more active 
and more available. Oh, cool. Yeah. So the combination of the shilajit, which is from the highest place on earth, as you said, and it's black and it's plant-based, and then combining that with the Dead Sea minerals, which is obviously from the ocean, the lowest place on the earth, and it's white. When we test it in laboratory, it's like this incredible symphony. It's like an orchestra of, of notes mm. that's like singing. And, um, you know, that's what's missing from a lot of our food and soils now. So when we give our body access to all of those um, nutrients again, then a lot of those areas that are currently compromised can come back online. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But <clears throat> it's interesting because, I don't know, I, I just, <laughs> what, as I think of that, I'm like, that sounds, it all makes so perfect sense. And I love, um, you know, just harmony and complementary. Like, it just it seems like the, a puzzle piece that can, you know, up-level humanity's vitality. But, like, if one thing's at the highest point, you know, there's mm. no tribe that I don't know could, of, of ancient people that could, travel the Himalayas and then like travel all the way to get what they need. Mm. It just seems interesting that nature would put this perfect um, equation so far apart. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, but then along comes you and it's like, here's the solution. You know, I just, I'm so fascinated by that. Like we're there along your journey. Like how, you know, how did you get this information to s- solve for these problems? If that makes sense. Or, I just I'm fascinated that you know are you a meditator like when did how does your are you just like follow you're just on this journey and you followed Mm. from here to there to um, the gentleman who gave you the hard drive and one thing led Mm. to another and all of a sudden you're like bing yeah I became I became like obsessed in theoretical physics and cosmology and what that really taught me was uh, the manifestation from energy into form And what I mean by that is going from like, um, I guess the field through those different layers of like magnetism, electricity, plasma, and then uh, those subatomic particles into matter. And that first real layer of matter is the atomic world. So the elements or the periodic table, that's all the different atoms. Mm. So um, once I realized that a lot of those atoms, which are the building blocks for all life, everything, the actual, in, the, the, the entire material world, right, mm-hmm. um, are not actually in our food because they're not in our soil anymore. Mm-hmm. I just saw that our expression has to be compromised if our body doesn't have access to some of those Nutrients, you can call them micronutrients, but because I was doing the physics and seeing the structure of them being these little toruses, I was actually seeing them as energy centers that our body needs access to and it doesn't have access to them. So, again, we have to be compromised if we're not getting them. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the sea has different ratios to the plant world. So, again, you pick that up in laboratory and when you combine the two, it's like where one's slightly deficient, the other one picks it up and complements it. So um, yeah, I, I, I often explain it as like keys on a piano, mm-hmm. which is really interesting because there's the black and white keys mm-hmm. and there's 88 keys on a, on a piano mm-hmm. uh, and there's 88 minerals in shilajit and there's a few more in ocean plasma, but there's 88 there as well. So. Um, yeah, like to play the proper song on a piano, you want to have access to all of those keys and all of those notes. Mm -hmm. And it's the same as human vehicles, right? Like we're singing a song. Mm -hmm. Everything's a frequency, everything's a a notes. So we're like an orchestra singing a song. And if we don't actually have access to those notes, then we can't sing our, our, our full expression. (laughs) <laughs> I'm so fascinated. I mean, there's we can't even begin to crack everything that you've become aware of and can articulate so much better than I can. But yes, like 
the language of the universe, music, mathematics, and like yeah. our full expression. Yes, yes, yes. And if mana vitality can get me a little closer, I am taking it. I, I just I love what you've learned and um, just the journey that you've been on. Yeah. Um, and what? So what is your journey now? I mean, are you still uh, you're, you are you still inventing these resonant um, technologies? Are you focused on mana are you still kind of just going where the spiritual journey guides you like what's your Mm. what's the day-to-day life of or the next year look like for david yeah it's a little bit different just at the moment because i'm ceo of a couple of companies and also running a foundation a private foundation in australia so there's quite a lot of busyness yeah associated with that but i just stay in a as flowy a space with like that i can Mm -hmm. um we've got a team of about 30 people so if things start feeling um, too business orientated, we'll just kind of stop everything and say, let's take a different approach. But obviously, as you know, um, once you get involved in those kind of projects, there's times where you've got to, you know, do 18 hour days back to back for weeks or months to get mm-hmm. things done. And a lot starts coming back at you when you get the exponential growth. Uh, but my passion is still around, um, you know, we're, we're water beings. Mm-hmm. 99% water by molecular count. And most people know that now, most people drink a lot of water. But we're actually salt water beings. So not many people think about that, like you think all the fluids that come out of us are salt water. Mm-hmm. And if we're not getting those salts or those minerals from our food, then it's really important that we get those. So I'm still super passionate about sharing that message because we're not, just salt water beings is we're electric, electromagnetic as well. Yeah. So the minerals are actually little electrical systems or they're turning our fluids back into, like they're turning them on, they're charging them up. Uh, and there's three main fluids in the body. So the blood, the interstitial fluid and the, and the cells. And the way that the nutrients comes in through the blood and, and the nutrients and the oxygen to get into the cells, it has to go through that interstitium. So we're really um, making that interstitium, uh, we're, we're giving it all of those minerals, which is, I guess you can think of it as like um, all of the charge and all of the electrical wires and cables that it needs to function correctly. Mm-hmm. So we're tuning in the biological system to be almost like a liquid crystal. Mm-hmm. And the importance of doing that is it can communicate with all of the organs and all of the other cells really clearly, but more importantly, it can communicate with the field. So it makes us like an antenna to be in the same heartbeat as the sun or as the earth and the sun, the solar system, the galaxy and the universe. And once we're in that state, then life can become like this magical flow and experience where things just actually come to you Mm -hmm. so it it removes like those layers of stress and those layers of struggle and we're one again with nature and with the universe which is so supportive it loves us so much and life is meant to be like this magical experience magical mystical yeah yeah this this magical experience of like deep wonder and deep gratitude to exist. So I'm super passionate about sharing that good news and the truth of who we are. And then a lot of, um, we're running MANA as as a charity, meaning it's supporting community and any of the extra money is going back into R&D because we've got this incredible pipeline of products coming. Uh, And the next one will have um, gold in it, which, um, which is like a superconductor and the most supreme nutrient that I know of on the planet. Uh, again, for bringing more light into the body and transforming the human species. So uh, that's just the stage that we're in. These products reproduce themselves at certain times in certain cycles is what I understand. Okay. Uh, and that's the Egyptians used to speak a lot about it and other ancient races before them. So the formula that we have for the gold is about 4,000 years old and i know friends now that have activated their light body and are just living off light 
So that's that's an opportunity <laughs> that's for all the of next, us. Uh, yeah. That's the next phase. Yeah. The next paradigm. <laughs> I mean, that's kind of what needs to happen based on our food systems failing and societal structures failing. Woo, this is exciting. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it probably sounds very out there to a lot of, but I'm super into this um, and water and just listening, you know, getting that communication through the minerals. I was just, and this is, I'm, I'm like the rudimentary out picturing of what you're articulating, but I was mm. like in the sauna. And I don't, I, I go through phases of posting on Instagram. It's just if I'm wherever life has taken me, but I just mm. had, was inspired. It was yesterday or the day before, and I was in the sauna wearing some funny Russian sauna cap that I had no idea what it did. Um, but I was like, okay, so I, I sweat doing my workout, and now I'm sweating in the sauna, but you know, it's important to get, put the minerals back in your body because you're not just sweating out water. You're, I literally said what you just said. Um, so it's just it's it's just so wonderful because I want to live in that space of, mm. and I'm a manifest you know manifester meditator, the secret inspired me it kind of mm. changed my I work a lot with gratitude, but really to um, to to give our bodies we are these incredible intelligent technologies you know yes. the human body is insanely intelligent and that's kind of what heal was all about was just saying we have so much more there's so much more possibility with what we were designed to express and achieve and especially when it comes to healing and breakdown to get back online and and mm -hmm. be able to right the ship um we just need to support it and it mm -hmm. sounds like something like mono vitality and just getting those minerals that have been leached from our environment and then getting them back in our body so that our bodies can work optimally the way they're designed which we're you know you seem to understand very deeply but i feel like we're just we only understand a fraction of what we're able to actually do and accomplish like living off light mm -hmm. um so it just like i just love this conversation you've been able to go <laughs> and journey the world and visit these mystical sites and these ancient you know the egyptians and um, the, the guardian of the Sphinx, you know, and to mm. take all this knowledge and put it in so that we can begin to just get the, the you know, physical, energetic, <laughs> uh, this body, electromagnetic, you know, so that we can live in this place of gratitude, faith in this like unconditional loving source the miracle and awe and wonder of what life is and then mm. just to really like surrender if if we are in that aligned state where everything's firing and wiring the way it's supposed to supported mm -hmm. by nature and minerals our environment um and then we can just like magnetize the, the people and the answers and the experiences <laughs> that are meant for our greatest expression you know and yes. whatever i was came here to share and what you came here to share and create it's just so cool like that's mm -hmm. this is the space i want to live in you know what i mean <laughs> <laughs> forget instagram and all the negativity that's on there and like just this, these are the conversations i want to have yeah you know um and just get, like if if i was gonna take a pilgrimage over the next year like what are mm. the give me some of your greatest <laughs> experiences that are like the top three I know, and you're probably going to reflect back to me like, you're going to go on your own journey. You're going to find your own mystical forests and whatever. But um, I just would love to hear you share a couple mm. more mystical experiences or places, magical kind of magnetic experiences that are awe-inspiring for people to follow their own heart and have their own experiences. But give me a little, a couple more ditties on your journey that you, that were just like so miraculous mm. to our consciousness you know because i get excited about this yeah and i mean you're on an incredible journey as well right um the thing i always recommend is to get into nature mm -hmm. because nature is constantly showing us and it's so easy to miss that and whether it's sun gazing or just observing what's happening with bees or ants mm. it can sound super simple but within that simplicity of life, the magic is remembered. So if we're able to just remember that truth of who we are, remember that connection, that brings in a lot of layers of peace. And there's no right or wrong. Like it's, you know, people can choose to live whatever kind of life they want to live. 
and we're in this dualistic conditioning at the moment I guess the beautiful thing with getting out of that dualistic way of living is the geometry of our body changes and we're unified with the universe so uh, at, at that point um, you know everything changes from a perception and it's a lot of the uh, requirements or things that we think and feel in that polarized dualistic way of living um, we go through it like a genetic liberation literally through cellular illumination and to live from that space is 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 just pure harmony and, and pure peace so it's an invitation that's always there from the universe or nature this is like this quiet voice just whispering and it's so kind and loving that it's just always there as an invitation but we don't have to take it we can spend as many lives as we want in that duality which is a beautiful experience and from spirit's perspective that is can never be that it can only create the idea of that and experience it through our vehicles that's the miracle mm -hmm. from spirit's perspective so it's not in a hurry yeah yeah <laughs> totally but definitely during these periods of more light in the universe and the galaxy that we're heading through these light bands we have that opportunity uh, and more so as a collective to uh, take that option um, so yeah experiences to go and have uh, I mean uh, some of the ones I've had I wouldn't necessarily recommend because <laughs> <laughs> I've had nothing and and you know just wandered through deserts or been in some pretty remote places where you're not sure um, what's going to happen mm -hmm. uh, which is pretty intense and you know some of the levels of purification um, when you're tapping into the subconscious where you've got sankaras arising to be released um, can feel like a death yeah which is not pleasant so um, going through that incineration and resurrection process is is very intense as well so yeah it's not like something that I would ever want to push on people mm -hmm. it is the right timing it is if there's like a strong calling or for a lot of people they've just had enough of feeling the way they have mm -hmm. and they know there's more and that's kind of the impulse or the inspiration to go on the journey or it could be an illness or a sickness or whatever it is um, often if we're comfortable uh, we don't bother yeah yeah <laughs> it's hard to <laughs> leave the comfort zone although nothing ever grows there yeah yeah, yeah. so it is very personal and uh, as I said, I wouldn't want to kind of advise or push mm -hmm. anything on people. It's just something that has to be the right time yeah. for yourself. I mean, nature, just nature, that recommendation alone was great. You went to the extremes of nature, it sounded like, in these extreme circumstances that allowed you to have these massive healings and mm. deaths and rebirths and growths. Um, but just being out in nature yeah, and that, or, you know, doing the sun gazing, yeah. um, that reconnection with nature is going to mm -hmm. unlock a lot of definitely you know. and giving yourself time yeah it's like probably the greatest thing i i'm thankful for is giving myself time in a lot of those um sacred locations and they don't have to even be sacred locations but i guess what i mean by giving myself time is often i'd go somewhere for a week um and just stay for three months mm -hmm. or stay until i felt like i had to leave there were some places I might have planned on going for a month but left after a few days as well. So just following the intuition, following what feels right. I know when I was at the Dead Sea for 88 nights, I learned more in the last three days than the previous 85. So to me, that was a real sign of like, wow, like, you know, thank you. Thank mm. you for the fact that I stayed. Yeah. Um, and Uluru in the centre of Australia was the same. Um, Tasmania, which is kind of the, the bottom part of Australia, was the same. Um, Mount Shasta was the same um, so yeah just once you stop and the noise stops and you're out in nature it you just follow the guidance mm -hmm. yeah it'll lead you yeah or you'll lead yourself yeah yeah <laughs> but I love that too because that's what I did here with you I was like well you know we're, we're not like a product forward 
podcast ever, you know? Yeah. But Mana, like the name hooked me enough to look into it and then reading yeah. your story and the, you know, Guardian of the Sphinx. And I was just like, wow. And the, and the books that you read, you, you shared, I think, on some blog or on the website, even some books that you read okay. at every journey. And I was like, I've read that one. I've read that. Ooh, I haven't read that one. <laughs> so there's just a lot of, you know, I just, it's such a wonderful place to be just going with your intuition and mm. flow and trusting. And I think a lot of that has come from me because I have this pretty regular meditation practice. Um, you know, and I think that people can achieve that through being out in nature too. Mm. Some people get into their meditative state hiking or mm -hmm. camping. And I haven't had a lot of time to do those things, but I do meditate every day. And so just quieting awesome. um, the noise and turning within and, and just, it's just, it's like kind of a mm -hmm. conscious connection to source mm -hmm. every day, whether it's through nature, through meditation, whatever these practices, getting in the ocean. And, uh, <sighs> but it's, it's great to see someone who is just really kind of a hundred percent living in that magnetic flow and guidance. Mm. And then having that affirmation for me and following that going, yes, this is, you mm. can exist in this way. Mm -hmm. Um, and to know, to follow when, there is some sort of dis-ease in mm -hmm. your life, in your energy. Like I'm, I'm not even anywhere near vital, as vital as I want to be. And I know that there's things going on in my life that are like pushing me in a different direction. And, <laughs> uh, I also have a toddler that's gonna like be a little bit of a challenging. But it's just nice mirror. Yeah, it's a great mirror. It's it, you, you say you know source, which I just spoke about this in my podcast talking about Joe Dispenza's meditation retreat. You know, spirit is. Experience in itself through us through these little fractal yes. out picturings of it because it's just this unconditional frequency of love unconditional love right mm -hmm. um, and so for us to have this experience of duality and separation and pain and suffering it's mm -hmm. all good and richness of, of being right mm -hmm. and so as for those people that are now just sustaining and living off light mm -hmm. are they I mean are we gonna is that the next evolution where we're not going to be in this the pain and the suffering of war and or is that still you know what's what's the next iteration <laughs> where are we going where are we going from here yeah i just want to go back to answer a question that you asked before because i don't feel like i answered it properly okay. Okay. and that is uh like what things can we do because i kind of gave examples of like long things and i as you were talking it's like not everyone has access to those so I think, yeah, getting out in the sun is amazing. Going for a swim in the ocean is amazing. Meditating is amazing. Vipassana, if you've heard of that. Uh, 10 days. Yeah, Oof. that's really powerful. And I know 10 days is still a big commitment for a lot of people, but it's worth it. And even though I don't necessarily fully agree with the whole uh, discipline around parts of it, it's beautiful for just giving yourself... 10 days with yourself mm. and all of the structure is just so that there's no distractions and you have to sit and get to know yourself for 10 days which is really really powerful like everybody to know that everybody i know that's done it it has exponentially um, amplified like their meditation experience and they've all had profound breakthroughs mm. so you know like 10 days of a a parsnip could be equivalent of like 10, 10 years of normal meditation. Right. Literally. Yeah. It's so concentrated. So that's really powerful. Okay. Um, and where are we headed? Yeah, it's a, it's a good question. I mean, from the universe's perspective, again, this time is very different, right? Uh, but I believe that, yeah, we are going through a stage where those layers of separation, those veils will keep removing. When this information age where... Uh, people are getting exposed to a lot of incredible information. Obviously, still being in a dual, dualistic reality, there's the other happening as well where there's a lot more struggle and a lot of that centralization is really uh, amplifying. And within that deep struggle and amplification of uh, you know, financial systems and, and, and medicine and the environment and agriculture and all of that, within that extremity, the most profound solutions will also be birthed which is really exciting so i get exposed to a lot of those and it's very very inspirational 
on all of those different industries, mm-hmm. um, in particular with finance, which uh, is kind of like a physical and energetic prison to so many people. So many people just feel locked in mm-hmm. and can't get out because of the, the way the system's set up. So, um, yeah, more supportive ways of us being sovereign, giving our time back is really exciting so that we can explore that truth of who we are. And then, yeah, I believe we are entering a golden age on the planet. Uh, and that will start through communities using some of these advanced technologies. And ultimately, the entire external world is an expression from our inner state. Mm-hmm. So the fact that there is so much change happening means that there's so much change happening inside of us. And I think that will just go exponential. So yeah. I feel very inspired and um, I'm very excited about where we're heading. Uh, even with technology as well. I think ultimately technology will look back at the human vehicle and be so fascinated by it because it is the most advanced technology in the planet. Mm -hmm. So it will become obsessed in trying to figure it out because it's the one thing it can never figure out Mm. because we have infinite inside of us. So that journey to understand the infinite for something like AI, which has this incredible computing power, it will solve all kinds of things in its attempt to solve the unsolvable riddle. And some of those things will be uh, illness and disease. Um, other things will be like uh, uh, the death of cells. So it'll probably be able to keep cells alive forever, which um, you know, then, uh, then we won't have to die if we don't want to. <laughs> Wild. Wild. <laughs> um. And we talk about, I'm really fascinated. Thank you for sharing that. Mm. I, I agree. I, I feel like with, you know, it's easy to be caught up in the fear and the, what we're seeing with our senses mm. and experiencing with our senses. But um, I do believe that there's an equal and opposite reaction to whatever dominant narrative or experience that people are having. Um, financial crisis whatever it is and then there's yeah. just always an equal and opposite reaction yeah. you know i know that's a little bit more newtonian physics but um it's very helpful and i i i am very much aligned with your kind of hypothesis there and fear is a very real thing right yeah and we've been conditioned with fear and again our brain operates that way because it's dualistic and we are everything like we're aspects of god and there's no separation. So everything's coming out of the same source, the same field, and returning back to that same source and same field. And everything is everything. So everything's us. Mm. And we're so quick to... Because our, our, our brain perceives things as separate, our senses say that you're there and I'm here, but actually what's looking out of my eyes is looking out of your eyes and everyone else's eyes. It's the same thing. And so we are everything. And that includes artificial or automated technology. That includes any of the fear-based things that are happening. So as the consciousness rises and we understand that, then a lot of the fear-based actions just organically dissolve. They don't make sense anymore. Mm -hmm. And that's where we're headed pretty quickly. (laughs) Wow. Hold on. Hold on to your butts. (laughs) as as I'm sitting here and listen, you know, thinking of my audience listening, who generally, some of them are are having these own explorations and questions among in them, their own lives. Mm. Other people are just struggling to find answers for their physical disease. Yes. Um, so for someone who is listening, trying to grasp that we are God and God is expressing through us, and mm. we are infinite, and we have these advanced, you know beautiful intelligent beings and ex, you know expressions of the divine and um wh- what what do you say to someone that's just like dealing with the fear of a terminal diagnosis or a, a, a body that is breaking seemingly breaking down on them on them like how do we get someone who's going through that out of the fear and back mm. like how would you advise someone close to you in that experience to right the ship, I guess? Yeah, it's a really good question. You've got to get the minerals back into the body, firstly. Mm. Uh, there was a Nobel Prize winner last century called Linus Pauling, and he 
claims that all illness and disease can be traced back to a lack of minerals in the body. Oh, wow. So that's why I'm so passionate about mana is it's those plant and sea-based nutrients uh, and, and minerals and micronutrients. So getting those back into the vehicle, again, it turns on that electrical system yes. uh, and removes a lot of that compromising and allows that antenna to align with the universal flow and our higher dimensional template. So our higher dimensional template or, or pristine blueprint can never be contaminated or affected by environmental illness or disease. So we're a projection of that. If we can realign with that higher dimensional template, we actually can't be sick. Mm -hmm. Uh, So getting the minerals into the system is really important because that allows those interference patterns to, to help remove, getting light, getting back into nature, getting the feet on the earth, getting that early morning light is really important and removing those layers of fear and separation however we can do that a lot of the time it's just through deep gratitude really simple things like you know waking up in the morning instead of waking up thinking you know I've got another day here I've got to go to work slowing down being in the moment and being so appreciative that we get to take another breath or we get to have another turn in this body or we get to see our children or we get to look outside at the sun or we get to have a glass of water like just that real back to basics um and yeah i think i think that's the best start Mm. yeah it's really just getting that foundation um and that mind back into that space of gratitude is is really really important and then aligning with that that center of us that zero point uh will will give us that clearest communication with that high dimensional template and once those interference patterns and those layers start removing then everything starts starts coming back online and starts um healing yeah and just to back up what you just said because i know you have this you know i would say that your language and your perspective is deeply spiritual Mm. and a lot of but two other things that have come into my consciousness as you say that just to kind of back up what you're saying like when we have that higher dimensional template we cannot get sick the way that's how beautifully we're designed that's how life that's how the divine expressed our (laughs) our little you know this human being um and it's beautiful and it's brilliant it's so intelligent and and joe dispenza is doing work right now that is showing this is just a tiny little snippet example of this for advanced meditators going through his program constantly doing this deep meditation that then connects them to source Mm. um they literally create biochemistry in the body that is uh defensible like is not vulnerable to COVID 19 or SARS-CoV-2 yes Yes. so that's one example scientific research just showed that so Mm -hmm. you can you know based on a higher frequency of of lifestyle and living and choices and you can or you know and and then a and a better functioning body with Mm -hmm. these reintroduction minerals and the electromagnetic um, communication lines and water (laughs) um you know that we we literally become immune to this outer environment that is seemingly causing us so much fear and so that was joe Spence's research that just came out and then also Anita Morjani who was in heel and her body was riddled with cancer mm. they couldn't even tap a vein she was in a coma the, the, I, there was not a human being on earth that could look at her situation and think that that body could recover she mm. was end of end of life and stage cancer and um, had a near death experience experienced that unconditional love and expansion had an encounter with the essence of her father um, and there was no animosity or, or friction that they had in, in this three-dimensional world mm. um, and it was just forgiveness and love and understanding and then all this like all-encompassing no time clarity and awareness that she had developed this cancer experience because of she had been coming from fear mm. And she didn't want to go back into her body because she was 
had rejoined with Source, which was this magnetic, unconditional, indescribable love. She's like, I, I'm good. I don't want to go back there. I want to stay here. This feels fantastic. <laughs> and her, the essence of her father, or you know, she had this awareness that if I went back, um, I have a mission to that is unfulfilled, and I and I will heal if I go back oh. to my body. And so that's kind of these are just two examples that are backing up what you're saying. Yes. You know, this this she had this subconscious healing where she connected with Source. All the fear was gone of where she, you know, when we die, that's what she experiences. Oh, there's no death. We are eternal. Mm. And that is what we are made of. And that is what we return to. And this is just an illusion. Mm. And she came back into her body, this body that no, no one would think could recover. And with that shift in awareness from fear to love and that experience, her, the, everything just came back online and reorganized and mm. zoot, higher dimensional template and within five weeks she was walking out of the hospital no cancer in her body wow so i just that's awesome these are all examples that are yeah. backing up what you're saying and, and i feel like they're different examples that are just kind of evidence so and there's so many different ways to kind of get there too right mm -hmm. um Thank one God. of my dear friends and business partners dr beth mcdougall mm -hmm. who's also part of mana uh, she has a practice up in san francisco in the bay area and it's called uh, the Clear Center of Health and also Jaisen Labs. She has about 10,000 patients, but she gets sent a lot of people that other doctors just don't know what to do with. Wow. So very complex issues. Um, she just recently had um, a man up there who's had four cancer four times and was given not long to live. Um, and she put him through a treatment. Uh, she's actually got a book called The Prestine Blueprint which is how to heal yourself and get you back to that high dimensional template. Cool. Um, so she had him every day for a month and now he's fully recovered as well. So there's different modalities you can use and also she uses some very advanced resonant technology to assist with that. Cool. Um, so yeah, there's lots of ways to get there. <laughs> Amazing. Thank God. Yeah, because yeah. there's a lot of people going through a lot of things. Totally. So it's, that's wonderful. Well, I mean... Anything else to share? Because this, this has been a wonderful conversation. But anything to share, um, leave our audience with before we wrap up? Yeah, I guess, uh, like my wish for people is, yeah, just to take that time out and discover that truth of who we are. Because regardless of how long you're left here, in this body, in this vehicle, we learn that we're infinite and eternal beings. And so we can develop that deep peace with inside of us, knowing that we're always going to exist somewhere doing something. And whatever that experience is from that space, we can appreciate it because that's, uh, that's why we're here. You know, there's so much magic to appreciate regardless of what's happening in our mind mm -hmm. or even what's happening in our body what it takes for existence to take place is is like the deepest love we can ever imagine so being able to remember that and it's like not a theory or not illusory it's actually true like we're just you know our, our body's made of a hundred trillion cells and each of those cells is made of trillions of atoms and they're all working in harmony so we can sit here now and have these conversations and walk out of this room and experience life and we've been gifted that uh, which is the greatest miracle we can ever um, experience. So mm. just having some time each day to remember that is um, just a nice nice way to live your life. Can I just add, can ask you one more follow-on question course, to yeah. that? Because I sit here and we're having this beautiful conversation and you've traveled the world and you've had successful businesses. And, People look at me and they're like, oh, that's easy because you're married to so-and-so or you're <laughs> white and a woman and, you know, whatever the privilege that they are throwing at me, which is all true. Yes. Um, so I agree with that, what you just said. Mm. And it, it also pulls us out of, if we can stay in that awareness, it pulls us out of the, you know, just the doldrums of everyday life <laughs> that pull us into this, you know, suffering and complaining and um, woe is me. So, but is there, like, how do we, for people that are, you know, struggling or in this mm. poverty cycle or um, 
haven't been so fortunate as us to feel this way and to travel the world and whatever we we have done to get us to this awareness mm. um i mean is it could could we have gone down the path and been in that situation like how do we how do we get people who are really just trying to survive to live to find the miracle of life and to really believe that this is a blessing and a miracle and to get back to that awe and wonder when they're just really suffering and surviving yeah it's definitely a process i think it starts with faith like understanding that there is a god and that the universe is supportive the universe loves us and then understanding that it's not just happening for us but it's happening from us is a really powerful perception to have so uh, yeah, it's, it's, I mean, you don't have to have things. Actually, I found the deepest peace in having nothing. Mm. Um, yeah, there were several years where I had nothing <laughs> and I was still walking because once you're in that trust space, then things turn up for you. Mm. Um, as I said, I wouldn't necessarily recommend that exact approach, but there are a lot of people at the moment with nothing. So you can sit there and kind of, um, uh, sit in those I guess more dense frequencies or you can do things like jump in the ocean or um, meditate or um, just remove those layers of separation which again comes into gratitude right like just looking out at the earth and appreciating every being for who they are whether they have everything or they have nothing but just getting into that perception of of gratitude for what's taking place mm. <laughs> again because what's taking place is it, it is the greatest miracle there's no denying that mm. regardless of again the light or dark or the right or wrong perception if we can observe that and remove that judgment there's things happening which are amazing yeah yeah like and and not things happening that are amazing but like everything that's happening is amazing because it's happening yeah <laughs> Our hearts are beating, we're breathing, we're That's alive, it. without thinking about That's all it. these biochemical and crazy, you know, functions that are happening within a millisecond in our body that are have got me to this, you know, That's four it. to four years of my yeah. life. It's like it's a miracle. And yeah. how the the extent that I've beat up my body and like yeah. you know, and it's still it's the resilience of that is just awe inspiring. Or finding beauty in nature that can get you into that space or looking in at your child or your mother mm. or your grandmother yeah. just like getting into that appreciation of what's right in front of you yeah and even if you have nothing in the in the physical sense you can still go and like look at a flower right mm -hmm. or you can still drink water or you can often still have a shower or jump in the ocean and if you kind of slow things down and understand like what's happening for that you know if you put your foot in the ocean you're connected to all the water on the planet <laughs> so just some of those really moments. simple basic moments which are yeah. really profound yeah mm. thank you thank you <laughs> <laughs> thank you for coming on um all right so where can people find you and and mana yeah, I don't spend too much time on, on socials, but the website is manavitality.com. Uh, I think there's an Instagram page as well. I'm not sure what it's called. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Well, it'll all be in the show notes. And um, and you so generously are offering our audience, if you put in the discount code HEAL, uh, you'll get a percentage off the product. So you can try it and get those minerals back in the body and up-level the system. I love it. Thank you so much for coming on today. Yeah, thank you, Kelly. Really appreciate it. Thank you for listening to The Heal Podcast. Be sure to tune in for more empowering wisdom and inspiring healing stories. Oh, and make sure you hit the follow button on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts so you don't miss that one episode that holds the answer you've been searching for. And if you feel inspired, we would love you to rate and review us so that we have the opportunity to reach more people. And of course, you can follow us on Instagram for some behind the scenes fun and more inspiration at at Heal Documentary and at Kelly Gore. 
Thank you so much and be well.